welcome you again in the classes of avs academy today we have to start the next unit that is the statistics for the environmental science if you look at the past years papers the majority of the questions from this particular chapter is from the numerical section two questions also asked from the conceptual question theoretical question uh, whether you have uh, have the understanding of the topics or not for that they can put also or arrange some theoretical question based on the assertion region or based on the statements only so that only you can find out in this particular unit if you look at the past years papers the average number of questions are in the range of 5 to 10 so basically on an average you can say 7 to 8 questions definitely you are going to face from this particular unit now the statistics that we have to discuss here under this environmental science paper 2 that is very basic statistic uh maybe i would say that is up, uh, up to the ug level only or up to the graduation level only only few advanced things or few advanced tests are there otherwise all mean median mode on those basic things you have to discuss here and that's all this paper would be this particular chapter will be completely ready so let's begin this chapter so let's start with the what we have to cover in this particular statistics unit so these are the things that we have to cover in this particular unit so before starting that what is the meaning of a statistic that i have included here statistics is the discipline that concerns the collection organization analysis interpretation and the presentation of data so that all these steps are included in the statistics and if you are doing these steps it means you are doing the statistics topics that we have to cover under the statistics chapter is the very first thing we have to cover the sampling so what are the different sampling methods that we have to cover and what is the difference between them chances are there the theoretical question can be asked from this particular section sampling then we have the central tendency in which only numerical questions can be asked then we have the deviation and dispersion concept so central tendency means that mean median mode now what is the meaning of mean median mode it means the middle of the data basically so finding out the middle of the data is called as the central tendency then similarly we have the deviation and dispersion here how your data is dispersed how your data is deviated or how your data is far or maybe less far to the central tendency value that mean median mode value so that would be your deviation or dispersion of data maybe your datas are very far from the middle value maybe from the mean value so you would say that your data is having high deviation high dispersion if your data are concentrated on the very nearby values of the middle values that are the mean median mode so then we can say that your data is having very less dispersion having very less deviation so that is our deviation and dispersion then we have to complete some test of significances for example z test we will see t e test we will see f test we will see all these test tests we have to cover and under this few test tests are also like chi square test so those all we will discuss one by one once we complete this deviation or dispersion then we have to study a little about the correlation and regression and what are the shortcut tricks that you can use in the examination that we will discuss here and in the last of this unit we have to cover the theoretical distributions all main three type of theoretical distributions we will cover here normal distribution binomial distribution and the poisson distribution another one chi square distribution we also discuss so we assume that the normal distribution is a kind of simple type of distribution and other are somewhere near to this normal distribution other distributions are so all those distributions and their formula we will discuss in this sixth sub part of this particular unit so let's start with the sampling today so what is the sampling now meaning of sampling now suppose you want to conduct a kind of experiment in whole india so if you look at the india we have almost 1.46 or 45 billion people living here almost you can say 140 crore 140 crore plus people are living here so if suppose you want data of average weight of the indians maybe average height of the indian 
so imagine how difficult it can be you cannot go to the each and every person and you can ask their height and their weight because that is also changing and then uh, completing that data that is not possible or suppose you want to conduct forget about the india let's take the example of only your district suppose you want to conduct a kind of experiment or kind of a questionnaire you can say uh, for the information purpose of all the peoples of your district how many females are there how many males are there how many children are there so there would be thousands of people maybe lakhs of people in your district if your district is densely populated so on that scenario average weight average height anything you want that calculation would be not going to easy that's why for the convenience purpose we have the sampling what is the meaning of sampling so what we will do here in the sampling we will take samples maybe homogeneous sample maybe heterogeneous sample Manu, uh, homogeneous sample means that sample with, which is kind of similar non homogeneous means that sample which is not similar to each other so sampling can be of both types so in the sampling you have to select only few individuals from the whole population and whatever you want to gather information from them you can gather for example the height height of all your sample maybe suppose 200 people you have selected or you can select maybe 500 people it is up to you how many numbers you are selecting and these all are part of this population and then you will ask their height their weight and we will assume here that whatever height or weight or whatever information we will get here it is resembling the whole population so that is the concept of sampling so sampling is a process used in the statistical analysis in which a predetermined number of observations are taken from a very larger population so only a small portion of that larger population can be analyzed here and we will assume that whatever information we are getting from this sample the same information we will get from the whole population because this sample is part of the whole population so that's why we use this sampling technique for the convenience purpose for the ease of the analysis purpose so this is the sampling this sampling how you will select these persons suppose i am selecting 200% or i am selecting 500% so how i will select the 200% 500% who those person will be from the whole population so for the selection of this sample we have multiple methods here that we have to discuss so here you can see that sampling method is divided in two main category one is called as probability sampling another one is called as non probability sampling so these two are the main categories that we have to discuss inside of this category we have again the main categories now first understand the what is the difference between probability sampling and non probability sampling probability sampling means that sampling which is based on probability now what is the meaning of probability that is based on the chances here in the probability sampling we have to done our sampling in such a way that every person each and every person of the whole population have equal chances of being selected in your sample so that that is also called as the random selection so it means that you cannot uh, say kind of any kind of you cannot do biasness you cannot do any kind of favor to any particular person suppose you want to calculate the average height or average weight and you weight average weight of the people and you are just eliminating the fat people so that is a not good sample we would say you have to include all and every one every person of your population should have equal chances of being selected in your sample so that is called as the probability sampling then we have another type of sampling that is called as non probability sampling so in this you can see this is not based on the probability so every person here is not having the equal chances of being selected so that's why it is called as the non probability sampling then inside of the probability and non probability sampling we also have other methods let's discuss the probability sampling first so in the probability sampling very first sampling you can see here that is the simple random sampling so suppose there are thousand individuals and all the thousand individuals are in front of you and what you will do you will just see the people or maybe you can blind uh, your eyes and maybe select the people maybe uh, you can just or uh, give numbers to all the people 1 to 1000 and when you are selecting the people randomly you will select any number 515 2 
599 maybe 700 and maybe 315 any number randomly you will select and you can select the 100 people so what you are doing here you are making equal chances of being selection of all the individuals present on that thousand people population so this is called as probability sampling and this method is called as the simple random sampling you don't have any rule regulation just by luck you can say or by just uh, your view you will select the people randomly from the population this is called as the simple random sampling then we have this systematic random sampling in the systematic random sampling again again take the same example we have thousand people here all are staying uh, in front of us and we have to select only 10 people from this thousand for example so what i will do so i will make a rule here what kind of rule that rule can be of any kind but it should be in a system so what i would say from one to hundred people i will select only one then from 101 to 200 people i will select again one and similarly up to the 901 2000 i will again select one people so all the 111 people would be equals to 10 here so what i am doing here I am making a system here. I am making a rule here or regulation here that I have to follow. I will select only one people from the starting 100 population. Then again, I will select one people from the next 100 people. So this type of selection is called as the systematic probability sampling, or it is also called as systematic random sampling. Randomness is still there. Any one of this one to 100 can be selected. Any one of the 101 to 200 can be selected. There is no biasness inside of these rules. So this type of the making system or doing a systematic type of sampling is called as this systematic random sampling or systematic probability sampling. So I hope these two are clear to you, simple random and systematic random sampling. Now, coming to the next type of probability sampling next type of probability sampling is stratified random sampling or stratified probability sampling so in the stratified what you have to do you have to make some strata now what is the meaning of strata strata are generally groups so suppose i have to select again 10 people from the thousand population so uh, what i would say i will just tell all the population that make the group of 200 people each so randomly, randomly the group can be made by the people, 200 in one group, 200 in another group. Similarly, we have total five groups here. Then what I will do, from these clusters, I will select these, sorry, these stratas. These are called as, the, each group here is the strata here. This is the strata number one, strata number two, strata three, strata four, strata five. And again, I have to select the individuals from these stratas. So this is called as the stratified random sampling or stratified probability sampling so i hope stratified probability sampling is clear to you then we have the cluster sampling in the cluster sampling similarly i will group make the groups but this would be called as now clusters and from these clusters i have to select the individuals so these are called as the clusters and these clusters when i'm selecting the individuals this would be called as the cluster sampling method so now here, what is the difference between strata and cluster? So here you can see this is the difference between strata and cluster. In cluster sampling, only selected clusters are sampled. For example, I have created again five clusters, like five stratas. In every cluster, I have 200 people. But here, what I found that the fifth number people are, are not having the enough numbers there, maybe not full 200. And these people are also maybe a kind of outsider people, or maybe you can say, suppose for any example, suppose you want to select only healthy persons and the fifth number group is not having the healthy person. So I have to select only persons from this one, two, three, four group or the one, two, three, four cluster. So that, that's what we can do or that flexibility we have in the clusters. While in the case of stratified sampling, you cannot eliminate any group. You cannot eliminate any cluster there, and sorry, any strata there. You have to select individuals from all these stratas. So that is called as the stratified sampling, and this is called as the cluster sampling, cluster probability sampling. So in stratified, you have to select the individuals from all the 
from all the strata. So while in the cluster, I can skip any group as well. I can only take individuals from the selected clusters. So that flexibility you have in the cluster sampling, but in the stratified sampling, you have to select individuals from all the strata. So I hope this is clear to you.